these actually came in the post. So um, I've got my 5 volt um, voltage regulator and I also have my plug. Now I couldn't find any um, that would get here in time or I couldn't, I couldn't find many that had the pins. Like basically I found the empty connectors but I couldn't find the type of pins that slide in. So I've got this version. Um, what I can do is once I've connected all the pins up I'll put some shrink wrap over the terminals and I'll snip, maybe cut all the ones off but they won't I mean they won't necessarily be connected but I'll um, do something with the other terminals that aren't in use um, just so that they're out of the way maybe just put a bit of tape around this whole thing so they're out of the way and not going to get in, into any uh, any problems so I've got to wire all of these up to the specific pins so one, two, eight, nine, and there was one more that I needed um, I think it was six or seven or something um, for the charge enable um, but that's going to go onto here and I've got a 12 volt supply coming off that also so I'm going to get to it I'm going to solder all these together and I'll update you once I have that all put together right so just so you can understand what I'm about to do I've made this uh, this quick diagram for myself as well and here is a website showing what uh, this little thing does well it shows it what it does and where the inputs are so what I'm going to do is to look at this side here so you've got the EMS supply coming out of the pin from the charger pin one from the charger that's going to be connected fused to the voltage regulator over here on input one ground is going to go over I've got two ground pins I can use um, that I salvaged from a different part of the car so connect to ground one is the pin 2 EMS supply return and then charge control and enable just so you can take control of the charger that's going to ground 2 and that will also go to the voltage regulator pin 2 here so that will then generate the 5 volt feed which will come out to here pins 8 and 9 and that will be 5 volt constant because I, because of the batteries that I've got I don't need to regulate the voltage I can just throw 40 amps straight out and put 5 volts up to get the max charge of 66.5 which is spot on for the full charge of my batteries so that keeps things a bit simple I don't need to I don't need to change the voltage at all so that's what I'm about to do I'm going to get soldering and I'll show you what it's like when it's done so there we go I've done the I've done the pin, wired everything up. I'm just going to tape this up afterwards once I make sure that everything's in the right place for definite. Um, so we've got there the 12 volt feed coming in and then we've got all the other pins wired up and neatly neatly connected to this little, this little device which is going to give me the 5 volts for enabling, for enabling the max voltage and max amps off the charger. So all that's left now is to plug it in and give it a test. Now I also used, decided to just use one ground wire because it's not going to be pulling hardly any amps and I just figured I may as well connect it all up to one, make it all nice and tidy. So there we go. That's the unit that I'm going to put into the car and see if we can get the charger charging those batteries up to 66 volts. So everything's plugged in. Um, it all seems to be correct. So that's all done. I've plugged in the batteries, so we're about to test and see if the charger actually charges these batteries. So it's plugged in, and there we go. Charge enable. The batteries seem to be going up. So that's really good, the fan's on. You can hear the charger going. So that seems to be, that little bit of kit seems to be working perfectly. Now I'm probably going to get all these batteries wired up first before I charge it anymore. But as you can see, there is 40 amps going into there because it's charged, you can see it changing on the, on there. So that's amazing, batteries are charging. So I've put in some orange wiring here, these flat cables. They came out of the car, the Volvo, along with these batteries. So these are, these should be able to handle the amperage quite easily. And uh, they're just, I'm just wiring the positives up to there. 
and the negative comes around and will plug into here which is linked to the fuse which is on one cable that's linked to the fuse so that everything goes through that into here and I've also just cable tied that up so it stays out of the way and uh, doesn't put any pressure on the, sold on the soldered joints and that's pretty much it um, there's enough room to reach in to get to this for once the lid's on uh, and I shouldn't have to get to any other places. I've um, brought the cable round for the for the um, the heated seats, so that's all there ready to install once the chairs go back in. And I'm hoping that once we charge it up, we'll see if this can handle the higher voltage along with the um, control here. So um, without further ado, let's get all this back together and see if we can charge the car up more than well, not to 100% until I've got it past its MOT, but um, a good amount just to see how well everything functions at the higher voltage. The progress. That is all the back end bolted down. Everything's bolted down now. Everything's wired in. And it's all connected up to the car. This side is wired in too. And there's our reading. 58.232% charge. Now what we're going to do now is for the final test is to see if this charger will actually charge it up to charge it up beyond what I'm looking for so that's all plugged in now and um, as you can hear the charger's working the fans working and if we have a look at the voltage that is slowly going up so I'll leave that for a while and see if the batteries um, gain some charge right so far so good it's at 59.4 at the moment. It's going up steadily. Now what I've realised, I've, I've got this hooked up to the the other DC to DC converter coming out of the heated seats. I'm just checking that the voltage is still running and if it goes up or down, but it's actually holding quite steady at 10 volts. So um, I'm just kind of seeing once we go above 60 volts, will this continue to hold out okay? As long as that works, that means everything's going to function. Um, the 12 volt, the uh, heated seats. Um, so that's what I'm mostly concerned about at the moment. But everything seems to be working quite smoothly so far. Um, so we'll come back again in about an hour and see if it's gone above 60 volts. I'm probably going to charge it to about 62 volts today, just to see um, just to see how things are holding. And uh, then it's just about getting things ready to go for an MOT. Now I was testing the lights and the indicators and all that kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with it at all so I'm quite quite thankful. Um, I've got to check the brakes and that's probably about it. Um, the brushes will need checking at some point once I can get in there. Um, but no, uh, otherwise it seems like a pretty solid car. So hopefully next week we'll see it going through its MOT and hopefully I'll have it on the road. Now the final thing to really start looking at with all of these is the BMS. Now I'm waiting on Tom Debris to see if he can do anything in here. I'm hoping that he can um, and then we can use these existing PCB or whatever you call them, these little boards that are on there and and then we can hook that up to a SIMP BMS and the SIMP BMS will keep the batteries levelled out um, and then also I can, I can hook that up to a rapid uh, charger at some point I'm sure as well. So we've been charging a bit longer than I thought. It's been a few hours, a uh, couple of hours to get up to 62 so you can see it's already dark now. Um, but as you can see on the meter we are at 61.8, um, 68% charge and as you can see the DC to DC on the, for the heated seats is still working so that's really good news the converter that I thought would only work at 48 volts um, is actually still functioning so um, everything's working great charge is going well um, now one thing I did realize I made a mistake with is that I wired the negative terminal to one of the one of the wires in here now the problem with that is that for some reason when I turn the blower on it drops the voltage straight down so it's pulling it's pulling too much out of that negative feed on this switch so what I'm going to have to do is when I turn that back off 
it shoots back up to the proper charge. So what I'm going to have to do is to move the negative feed behind the dash to somewhere a bit more robust that won't draw the current under load. So possibly I'm possibly wiring it to the negative in there perhaps. Um, somewhere that I can get to behind the dash that'll have a good negative feed. The positive shouldn't be an issue because that's actually wired. I don't know if you can see it actually. Um, there should be, there you go. You can see it, but you see the, um, it's wired in to the main 48 volt feed coming out coming out from the um, from the battery so that side should be fine I've just got to find a better grounding so that the voltage kind of holds so I'm going to stop it now because uh, I think that's close enough to 62 if it's still working now I'm pretty certain it will work all the way up to 66 but we'll have to test that as I say later on otherwise it may be a case of a 12 volt battery but for now that is where I'm leaving it tonight made a lot of progress all the batteries are completely wired in all wired in all wired in there it's perfect so all i've got to do to tidy this up a bit is to build a build a cover that goes over the, over the batteries right to the bend at the end of the boot and that'll give me my loading space uh, get the chairs in put a bit of reinforcement at the back of back of the chairs where i took the struts out and that car as long as everything else works, is ready to send to its MOT.